Hey, it's good to have you here. Today I'm working on two orchids that are completely different. The only similarity that they have are they're in broken pots and I would like to take care of that. And seeing as one of them was a gift from Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents, I might as well do a little show and tell, do an update, show the progress because doing well, but could do better. And the other one is my Renanthera citrina. <sighs> we'll see what is going on in that pot because <laughs> bandacious, stiff roots. I'm not sure if I've got viable roots in that pot. So whatever happens during this change of pot, I know one outcome for sure. They will no longer be in broken pots by the end of this project. That I can guarantee you. But how they are really doing, there's only one way to find out and that is to get them out. <laughs> So I'm going to start with the gift from Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents. There we go. And I got Golden Boy in October of 2021. It's almost been two years in this pot and she has been doing pretty good, I have to say. But I don't know if it's a character trait of this orchid, but you can see that the pseudobulbs are always somewhat shriveled. And I wonder if that could be because there's a problem with the root system or if it's just a character trait. I have no idea, but I've noticed that uh, since she's arrived in my collection, so it's not like it's something new. She's growing another new growth. This growth here, having a beautiful sheath, I just wonder if that is ever going to bloom for us because you can see she's not shy of growing sheaths. <laughs> Their blooms are a different story. So I'm just going to see what I can do to get her out. I can see one bit of sliver of a white velamen, and that is what I'm banking on to make sure that I don't hurt her, disturb her too much. So I'm not, she's not sliding out easily. That's a good sign. <laughs> At least we know there are some roots in there, whether it's a dead network of roots. Huh? I'm seeing something white. And there's more white and we've got quite a nice development all the way down. Unfortunately, one active root broke. That's a pity. We're going to try and make sure that we salvage that one there. These look brown, but they are not all dead. They're pretty firm. That's great news. And while the traffic does what it does, I ask your forgiveness if I can't edit all that out. Once we're in a pot and we're underway with a project, it becomes a little bit more difficult to stop what we're doing to edit out any of the background noise. So I appreciate your patience and tolerance with that. If I keep talking, maybe I can drown all of that out. <laughs> so look at this. We can also address some of the baby ferns that we're trying to get comfortable. Yeah, this root is firm. I like it. New roots are growing. Double like. <laughs> Speaking of like, would you like the video, please? Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. That would be amazing. I would appreciate that support. Thank you. And if you're here for the first time, while you're up there liking the video, would you also subscribe to the channel? If you're not subscribed yet, that would be also much, much appreciated. So that is just dust. I'm going to conclude. Woo, we got a new growth coming. That was close. I may have pinched that off. Unbeknownst to me, there is a new growth. This little, well, it could be okay. This little growth didn't look like there was much. So we did get this new growth right here, which is the stronger lead. And then there is a tiny growth that I skipped. I didn't recognize that it was brand new. Right in the back here with its own new growth. So you've got to be careful. Things aren't always as they seem at first glance. Now, I'm not really intending on fussing around too much. There's not much to do here. Just to be a little bit pedantic about what I'm seeing would mean to take off the bad actors in the back here. That's all there is really to it. It's not like this orchid needs a cleanup. She just needs a nice pot that isn't broken. And then we can leave her alone for as long as it takes, because clearly after two years, 
Something that I do is assess how vigorous is the root system, how long can I leave the orchid undisturbed until she blooms for us. And I would say, if nothing untowards happens here, this is two years of a root system. We've got easily four years in the new pot that shouldn't be breaking on us anytime soon. Right, so let's do it. And let's apologize to a viable root. Oh, sorry. Shall we? Clearly she was happy in small lecker, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put small lecker into her new pot. Let me just see how low can I put her. We have the leaves supporting the structure. No, that would be silly. She has a direction of growth, clearly. There's a back end and there's a front end and, well, the side end that I almost messed up. So I'm just gonna keep putting her in the middle as she was in the previous pot so that we can really leave her alone for four years. There we go, a much better representation of my person, <laughs> not having a broken pot, of being respectful of the gift that I got from Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents, as well as the image of the channel. Much better, and I hope, Fernanda, if you watch this video, that you are pleased with the progress of little golden boy. Now, fingers crossed that one day we're gonna be able to see some blooms. That would be nice. Okay, moving on swiftly to Renanthera citrina. I'm more apprehensive about that one. Let me put little golden boy back where he belongs and see what the citrina has in that pot. <laughs> Yikes, fingers crossed. This Renanthera could be a much, much happier orchid if I had more favorable conditions, but we are all waiting for better times, things to get better and improve so that I can provide for her again adequately. However, with a very high humidity summer that was extremely unconventional, not normal, you can see that she tried to grow two new roots right here, but they're not going to be progressing very much, I don't think, because after all this time, yeah, we are now heading into fall. At least we've got little stumps, at least she tried. But what also got me to pull the trigger, so to speak, and getting her out of this broken pot, because I've been procrastinating on that, is the fact she's got active root tips down here. Uh, with that, if we can get those into the pot, that would be amazing, because look at her <clears throat> actual root growth habit. These are not bendy bendy, even when wet, they are as stiff as nails. Even this beautiful branch, ooh, it's just, you know. Well, there's one thing I can say, <laughs> at least the ends didn't start extending again because it's becoming quite difficult to protect these roots <laughs> during the winter when I shuffle her in and out. Anyway, just to let you know why it has come to this stage, because I potted her up into this setup in 2018. Mm, yeah, it's time. It's time. I am apprehensive about this, but I figured if we've got active root tips, then mm, it's now or never, really. And while I hardly need to take her out of the mask, it just doesn't look right, does it? So first of all, let's try and get you in shot and remove, uh, separate the root here from the edge of the pot. At least give it a goo and see that we're successful. Oh, there's another one lying right underneath it. Okay, that's a good give right there. What about over here? Oh, oh, there's something underneath. Okay, there's something underneath that green root. I hope I didn't mess it up. <laughs> At least there's a cool breeze going, otherwise I would be perspiring just a tad at this point in time. If I can get these growing tips into the pot, at least I can provide better hydration. I'll make sure I don't crack the roots in the back as I keep turning her around and we'll take her off the support, which is only there for eventualities now. It's really not needed, but as she grows taller and taller, of course, I'm thinking positively, it's always good to have a support around orchids like these. She came to me as extremely crooked, so she's had a lot of light training to start to correct her stem. Let me show you. 
It's been years in the making and of course there were leaves at the bottom but you can see she came with a real kink and now after five years so we're kind of straightening her out so at least that's working if nothing else. Uh, yes it's evident she needs the support. The minute I took the top wire off boom we've got the leaning tower of Citrina going on here. Okay stop the jibber jabber get in there I've got a little bit of you know nervous goosebumps going on here. <clears throat> Let's do this. Okay, I'm going to, uh, nope, I have to make sure that I protect the root tip, so <laughs> the long stabby stabby roots are in the wrong direction. Keep your fingers crossed for viable roots. Careful, I'm not gonna yank her too much because something awesome is happening down here that we may need for future reference. You really need chameleon eyes in the orchid hobby, not just a third arm. <laughs> well, 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 that's three holes in the ground, but ooh, that's also me expressing my surprise and joy at these roots that are viable in the pot. Oh, I kink this one. But this, these are all firm, they're branching, they're growing. I didn't break this one. This looks flat up against what it was growing up against. <gasps> this is exciting. I'm happy. This one's dead, but we're not going to fuss. We're not going to fuss. Oh, don't tilt on me, girl. It's not so bad. It looks worse than it is, but it's not that bad. They're all firm all the branching. There is a viable root system in the pot. So we're going to <laughs> woo, breathe a sigh of relief, not get ahead of ourselves. Let's get her into her new pot safely. Alrighty. Now her history in the pot had small and large leka in it. So what I'm doing now, <laughs> I know, right? Only small leka. This orchid can grow so much more vigorously and temperature is not the only reason hydration is as well. So we're going to put her as low as we can go without snapping anything. Ooh, get that growing root tip into the pot. And if it decides to grow out again, at least there will be a part of that root in the pot that will get consistent moisture. <laughs> I don't mind if they start to sneak out over the edge of the pot, but at least trying to get part of the root in, that would be awesome. The long roots in the back, nope, there's no way. But these new root tips, and I want them below this little ridge around here because I don't want them circling the pot. So stay down. Even after soaking all this time, <laughs> that root right there and the new one right here, it's not absorbing water. So let's, let's see that we can get some position on her. Yikes, I gotta remember to breathe. <laughs> Ooh, she doesn't have a root structure that's holding her in place at the top. I need to tie her off first, just to get some safety going on here because she keeps wobbling and that's not good for what's going on in the pot. I'm trying to gauge the height of my first tie with the root nubbin that's right there. I don't want to impede that. And I'm still looking at that root tip. I have it in my visual. <laughs> it's trying to come up and sneak up and well, we're going to stop it. But I can only stop it once at least part of the orchid is steady and secured into position. And because I want to see the behavior of what that root tip in the back is doing, while I can still see it, I'm going to put the second tie on straight away as well. And while I'm doing this, I'm observing magnesium deficiency. So that's going to need to be corrected before the colder temperatures come because this is a warm grower. She doesn't appreciate the cold temperatures. Neither do I, mind you. But I think there is definitely an Epsom salt soap coming up very, very soon. Okay, she is solid at least at the top. Now let's go back down below and focus on getting <clears throat> that root tip <laughs> back into the pot <laughs> below the ridge. I 
I keep telling it, you can grow up and out once you have had enough of you growing in the pot. So do you, Boop, but first do what I would like you to do and then just, you know, come out and say hi. We'll do it my way first. Whew! <laughs> I can't tell you, but I was very nervous about this. But I'm also now very encouraged about this. So before I drain her, I'm going to put her tag in because now I don't know where the roots are. Okay, now we can drain her. They couldn't be more different, could they? <laughs> but both of them make me kind of nervous, especially if I can't hydrate one because of my conditions. <laughs> and especially if I get a gifted one, <laughs> I want it to grow well. Well, at least I can say we've improved the visual and now let's get the grow on. If you've stayed to the end, I hope that this video did not disappoint. I hope that you enjoyed it. And just let me know you're here, say hi. If you have any questions, the comments are also there for that reason. So all I can do now is wish you a fabulous day on that one condition though, please that you stay safe. Take care, bye.